Hi folks, we're looking at uh, Dr. Borkham's book, uh, Jesus and the Eyewitness, uh, the Gospels as Eyewitness Testimony, Richard Borkham, 2006, Erdnant, and we're on page 5 now. He says, it is true that, that a powerful trend in modern development of critical historical philosophy and methods finds trusting testimony a stumbling block in the way of the historian's autonomous access to that she or he can verify independently but it is also rather neglected fact that all history like all knowledge relies on testimony page five yeah there's been a, a double standard within scholarship i think um and i think that the theory of understanding history needs to change within the academic world uh when it comes to historical jesus studies um, we'll just deconstruct this. It is true that a powerful trend in modern development of critical historical philosophy and method finds trusting the testimony a stumbling block in the way of historians' autonomous access to the to to truth that she or he can verify independently. Now it's interesting that ancient historians, which we'll get into, uh, had great store in in eyewitness material. Uh, also, there has been a trend uh, between uh, macro and micro understanding of history. You see, there's been a big emphasis all over for a, a long time since rank uh, historian uh, on macro history. That is, looking at history on a on a big big compartment, uh, looking at history from. Uh, general perspectives or politicians' perspectives, but there's also uh, since the 60s been more of an emphasis on a micro level of understanding of history, and that is to say that um, we look at what ordinary people are thinking, what it, what are they saying, and we take their material, their eyewitness material, their stories, their diaries. So, what I'm saying is that maybe this reluctance on modern historiography of not wanting to take eyewitness material seriously is because it's been saddled with this kind of macro understanding of history without realizing the need to listen to the testimonies of individuals and to learn from what those are saying. I understand that historians study diaries and letters and, and all the rest of it, but why is it that we don't allow that kind of historical work inform us about the historical Jesus studies, why are we prejudiced? Maybe it's because there's been a running battle for the last 200 years between secularism and, and church and there's been a vying of power of wanting to control public space. Part of that is to undermine Christianity's intellectual foundations and one of those is the Gospels and the New Testament is based on eyewitness material and so to disparage that would also to undermine Christianity but I think as academics you need to come back and realize that this is not acceptable that you you're not here to play power games you're here to inst uh, to do historical study uh, in a more fair way as in the best and fair way that you can and then he says that always that rather but it is also rather neglected fact that all history like all knowledge relies on testimony and so therefore there's the rub that we can't just ignore the fact that if we're going to do history it's ultimately based on testimony we've got to be consistent where does that leave us in terms of Christianity well I think Borkus project is saying what we, we've got to get back to a fair 
practice of history and a serious commitment to seeing what eyewitness material there is and what we can learn from that material.